first of all, let me get your reaction to the proposed changes to health care in this country. We've just now got the text of the Senate version, which is different than the House version, but where you are in Houston and in Texas in general, how are feelings running now about uh, repealing Obamacare? Well, people need their health care. And um, look, I come from a, from a family where we didn't have any uh, private health insurance. We relied on the public health care system. You can't, uh, you can't remove uh, millions of people from uh, having ac access to health care um, and making it affordable for them. It's difficult for children to learn if they're not feeling well. So that's, that's, that's fundamental. It touches everyone. So some cities in Texas obviously feel that way and, and voted that way. Other places in Texas didn't. Do, you know, is there a provision to help people who you know, may be thrown off if well, there is a new version well, of healthcare? Well, let me tell you, I was in the legislature for 26 years in the state of Texas. We were losing $300 million a month because we did not enroll in affordable health care or ACA. $300 million. Many of our hospitals were closing. Uh, hospitals in urban, uh, urban centers and hospitals in rural America were being closed because of the rising cost of health care. People need their health care. In my city, in the city of Houston, it's a booming city, but 24% of the people in the city of Houston are working poor. They're working every day, but they need, their, they need health care. So it's fundamental, it's basic, uh, and it's something that people rely on every single day of every single week of every single month. Um, and it's not just access. You can have access, but if you can't afford it, you cannot get it. So, I, you know, as much as people criticize Obamacare, the ACA, the reality is is that um, it wasn't the perfect system, but there, and there were ways one could have improved it without simply eliminating it. If you eliminate it, then what are you putting in its place? And it's got to be something that people can not only access, but that they can afford. Let me ask you a little bit about the Houston economy right now. We're sure. seeing oil prices tumble and have been for a while yes. in the 40s to 50s range. Right. How has that impacted the economy of Houston, particularly at a time when other pressures are you know, in full force as well? You know, interestingly, in the 1980s, for people who remember when oil and gas prices were low, the city of Houston came to a standstill. The housing market crumbled. Employment was very, unemployment was very, very high. Now, in the city of Houston in 2017, the city is much more diverse. We are still the world energy capital of the world. Well, you know, that is true. But we are much more diverse. We are only about 40% reliant on the energy sector. Even with all gas prices being sluggish, stubbornly moving upwards, been very sluggish, the housing market is doing, is doing fairly well. We have not gone under in terms of un unemployment. In terms of employment, we still have been um, um, uh, having jobs being created in the city of Houston. We still have the health care sector, which is the largest in the world, the Texas Medical Center. We're still doing well in terms of our port, number one in foreign tonnage. And so there are many other sectors that have kicked into gear, and we're not as reliant on the energy Let sector. Let me ask how Houston has dealt with the sanctuary city issue. So yes. the state passed a law that allows anyone stop to be asked about their immigration before being arrested, correct. status before being arrested. Right. How has that impacted you know, even the population that are currently in Houston right now? Yeah, there's a lot of anxiety. We have the third largest population of immigrants, especially when it comes to illegal immigrants, uh, undocumented people in the city of Houston. We have the most diverse city in the country. Um, um, and the city of Houston, uh, city council, for example, just on Wednesday decided to, um, to sue the state on that bill, Senate Bill 4, that essentially says that our police officers can stop someone and ask them for their papers, even if that person has not been arrested. And if the police chief tries to intervene, the police chief can be fined if he tells our police officers not to do it. And if I say, as the mayor of the city of Houston, we're not going to engage in profile stops, that the Houston Police Department is not going to be ICE, then the state attorney general could step in and try to remove me from office. We believe it's unconstitutional. But the city of Houston has always said that we'll abide by any law that's constitutional as long as it is constitutional. We're out of time, unfortunately, Mayor, but I do have to ask you, as a Democrat in the compact of mayors, what's the primary goal for you right now? Right now is to make sure that we have a city that's financially run sound. That's why we solved our pension issue. Uh, we want to make sure that we remain a very diverse city, and we are. We're building a city for the future.